morning. Um, your first quiz is coming up, and I thought I would um, sort of go over it with you uh, quickly via YouTube. If you have any questions, please send me an email. Um, uh, this will be your first quiz. I think it's going to be fairly straightforward, um, but anyhow, um, I've printed a copy. You'll find it on Moodle now. Uh, Phil 101, section quiz number one, Socrates, due date is September 27th by uh, 5 p.m. So you have until Sunday to submit this quiz. Um, so it, basically in the course, you know, we're divided into six sections. Each of the quiz, uh, each section uh, will have a quiz attached to it and only it be quizzing that section that you're working on. So they're not comprehensive. Um, these are short answer questions, uh, should be fairly direct, uh, testing you on definitions, key concepts, that sort of thing. Um, these quizzes pertain to all of the course material related to that particular section. So for the Socrates, uh, my Socrates videos, um, the supplementary materials, uh, and uh, what happens on the discussion forum as well. So um, you're responsible for all of that. Um, it missed assignments if you're unable uh, for whatever reason, if, like I say, if the sky falls, um, it, if you're unable to submit this by uh, Sunday, September 27th by 5 p.m., uh, let me know in advance and I'm willing to work with you. Um, if you miss the deadline due to the sky falling on September 27th before 5 p.m., if you miss it and uh, this guy is still falling for a little while, please contact me within 12 hours. Otherwise, I can't offer you an extension. These semesters keep pushing on and um, it, it's necessary that we all stay sort of up to date with everything. Um, also, it's your responsibility. Uh, you see, you'll be uploading a file to Moodle. It's your responsibility to make sure you upload the proper file and do it correctly. All right, so double check yourself. If you're completely freaked out about this, send me an email with the file attachment and um, we should be able to take care of it that way. I'm getting much better at um, it, you know, opening various files. Um, I have access to Apple as well as to um, Windows-based um, machines. So um, yeah, basically if I don't have it, it's not there. Um, I can't go chasing after you with this. So short answer questions requiring one to three sentences for each response. Um, it, that's a rule of thumb. If you need more to actually carry the point, um, then offer more. Right? But if you can do it in like a sentence, if it's straightforward, um, it, then oh, I've got a cat trying to get out of here. Uh, then um, just just give me the one sentence. Right? So um, I don't know you yet. I don't know how concise you are. So um, it, that that will be the deal with these uh, questions. Um, answer them till they're answered. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I'm looking for a fairly straightforward response to a straightforward question. Uh, and again, you're responsible for all materials related to Socrates for this, your first quiz. Question one, um, this should be simple, direct. Um, why is Socrates the wisest man in Athens? Uh, this is, as Roderick would say, an ordinary sort of thing to know about Socrates. So um, it, one point for that, since it's so straightforward, it's covered in the videos, Roderick uh, handles it quite well. Um, Elena Baton handles it quite well. Um, it's, it's handled quite well in all of the materials. Uh, second question refers to the Roderick video. Um, and note that uh, on the Roderick video, I've given you a link to the 10 minute segments with the transcript there as well. So um, it reads in his video, Socrates and the Life of Inquiry, so uh, Rick Roderick claims that, so uh, that in Socrates, we find the initial distinction between the culture of science and the culture of humanities. On what basis within Socrates' argument does Roderick claim this? Right. So explain the distinction in terms of the basis in Socrates' argument. Um, make sure that you're actually cashing out these, these points. Um, it, you know, you, sentence fragments are unclear. Just make sure you're clear when you respond to these questions. Right. 
Um, question, uh, looks like I've got a typo. Uh, it says question two again, but it's actually question three. I'll fix that. Um, Socrates, on page 35 of the, the, the five dialogues, presents an argument where he compares himself to a gadfly. In what respect is he like a gadfly, and why is this important, uh, important by his argument to Athenian democracy? Right. Um, this was your discussion forum. It, basically, uh, it, this is addressed within your discussion forum, and I address it in the videos, so um, you should be well taken care of for that. And what is actually question number four, um, why by Socrates' argument in the Apology should we not fear death? what should we really fear, All right? So two points, two parts to that question. Um, just like there were two parts to the previous question, um, in what respect is he like a gadfly and why is this important? I'm looking for both responses for both of these questions. Anytime you see a two part uh, pointer, it's largely going to be um, two ideas, two concepts, two arguments, two definitions that I'm referring to. So that's the way that works. Um, and what is listed as question four here, it's actually question five, I'll read it to you. In the dialogue, the Crito, Socrates, and Crito each present theories of justice. This was very early on in the Crito. Um, A, what's Crito's theory of justice? What, what is his account of justice, right? Um, and B, what is Socrates' theory of justice? Now, in the five dialogues, I don't have a copy handy here, but very early on in this dialogue, basically Socrates points out that, you know, it's, you, you've talked about this with me, Crato, a number of times, and um, it, we seem to agree, but you're, you're presenting an argument on the basis of a different theory of justice altogether, and we can't even have a conversation unless we are on the same page with our theory of justice. I'm paraphrasing badly here, but nonetheless, um, there is that moment early on in the dialogue where um, Socrates makes Crato ascribe to his theory of justice because there is sort of a distinction between them. Um, then the last two questions are fairly straightforward one-pointers about the two key concepts that are in the Crito. In his fictional conversation with the laws of Athens, Socrates introduces the notion of the social contract. Define this notion. When we turn later to, and this is my funny old copy of Hobbes, the social contract will become an important you know, concept again. Um, so uh, that's your second to last question. The last question is almost word for word the same, but I'm referring to a different idea altogether. In his fictional conversation with the laws of Athens, Socrates introduces the notion of tacit consent. Define this notion. All right. So they are two related but distinct, importantly distinct kind of notions. Right. What's a social contract and what is tacit consent? All right, so this totals to 10 points. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email. Uh, this is a very quick video, just going over the quiz. Um, it, I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, but if there are any problems that I have not detected, uh, please let me know. All right, take care, and I look forward to reading your responses.